the last seven championships. First of all, the last four season openers have been won by four different riders. 1997 and 1998, Greg Albertine and Sebastian Tortelli won their first Supercross victories and so far their last in season openers. Last year, the King of Anaheim, he got that title because of four consecutive victories. Jeremy McGrath had the spotlight stolen away from him by Ezra Lust. Lust not only winning the first round of the season last year, but also the return bout here in Anaheim in round five. That is Relusk, Jeremy McGrath rivalry was expected to be intensified here this afternoon in Anaheim. However, in the second practice session, Ezra Lusk crashed into two other riders, breaking a collarbone. It is highly likely he won't be able to ride in tonight's race. Catching up with him just after the incident was Art Davy Coons. Thanks, Art. It didn't take long here at Anaheim for a big story to develop. Two-time defending Anaheim champion Ezra Lusk was involved in a three-rider pileup in practice. He is out for tonight, and he's out indefinitely. I started out over in the Kawasaki pits with John Dow to find out exactly what happened with the crash. I think uh, Albie just slid off the face of the jump and, and cased the next one and kind of crashed. And I had kind of seen the whole thing, so I, you know, I kind of cased the thing behind him, but I, w I managed to stop, you know, before I hit Albie's bike. So I was kind of stopped and just getting ready to kind of find my way through and uh, I guess Ezra was coming up behind us he didn't see the whole thing and you know he just kind of plowed right into me I was you know I was actually still sitting on my bike at the time but uh, Ezra I guess the flagger wasn't standing there or whatever and got a little road rash there you know that's Ezra's axle bolt right there I guess I kind of have a little mark on my back from that too but uh, I'm all right though well, they'd thrown a little water on the track and, uh, you know, came out of the turn taking the normal line that I usually take and hit the jump and my rear wheel just slid right out from under me and uh, I ended up going down uh, with nothing too serious and then uh, it looked like there was a bit, a bit slow uh, on the flagging and uh, John Dowd ended up crashing into my bike and then Ezra came right after that and crashed into his and uh, didn't end up being too good. Ezra, tell us what the damage is. Um, well, right now, it just looks like I dislocated my shoulder. Um, uh, it's not really bad. Dr. Chris Berg and from back home is here, and he thinks that it's going to be okay. It's just, you know, when you do something like that, you just strain the muscles, I guess. And and um, that's really what's hurt me right now, just swollen up pretty good. But it's going to be okay. I don't, I don't think I need any kind of surgeries or anything. So uh, I'm just, you know, unlucky something like that would happen. You were the obvious favored contender coming into this series this has to be a crushing blow yeah it's it's probably one of the one of the worst i think ever um, especially here at the first round after the past two months of doing what i've been doing and uh getting myself prepared my body prepared and honda all the work they've done on the new 2000 cr 250 and you know we, we still got kevin and we still got sebastian and uh we're just gonna put all our hope into those two guys David, what a frustrating situation this is for Ezra Lusk. Uh, what a blow to Honda because for the past two seasons, Ezra's been the runner-up in the championships. So of all the guys, it looked like Ezra had the best chance to knock Jeremy off that number one spot, and now he doesn't have the opportunity. And Knowing Ezra Lusk, I mean, we've seen him ride in pain. Last year in San Diego, he got landed on his shoulder by Greg Albertine, still won the event with Jeremy breathing down his neck the final few laps. So... It must be pretty bad for him to sit this one out. Jeff Emig is in the house, but of course he broke both wrists on New Year's Eve practicing for tonight's season opener and will be out for perhaps the entire season. So before the season starts, Jeremy McGrath has everything going his way. Just two days ago, here at the stadium, Pace Motorsports CEO Gary Becker presented Jeremy with his sixth championship ring. And representatives from Toyota gave him the keys to a new, new Toyota truck for winning last year's title. We'll be back with the action on the track when EA Sports Supercross continues from Anaheim, California. Hey, welcome to the Suzuki Fest 2000 Deli. Care to try a new Suzuki motorcycle with 400 bucks free accessories? I suggest the Katana 750 or 600 in Almond. The Bandit 1200 and 600 are house favorites and go great with leather jackets. Today's special is the GS500E with a side of gloves and a helmet. Everything's good, even the financing. Like zero down, low APR, and low payments on selected models. Come into Suzuki Fest 2000 today. Free accessories, great financing. Offers end April 30th. All right, so what do you like?
interview, they'll ask, do you work well under pressure? Try not to laugh. If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're going to love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. You got to eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, strength train with both legs. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism, so you end up burning more calories. Strength training these days isn't just for men. It's great for women, too. And Bowflex is designed for both. It's even been called the best home gym by Fitness Magazine. Use as little as 5 pounds to more than 400 pounds of resistance. Follow our six-week fast fat loss program or create your own from over 60 different health club quality exercises. Bowflex is easy to own, and it fits in any room in your house. It comes with a six-week guarantee on results, and you can finance it with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Hey, I'm 41, and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I can tell you, Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. EA Sports Supercross is brought to you by Honda Motorcycles and the 2000 Honda Race Team Honda Ride Red. And by Toyota, on the edge every day. And by Suzuki. During Suzuki Fest 2000, get $400 worth of free accessories and great financing on selected models. Welcome back to Anaheim, California for the opening night of EA Sports Supercross. What a grand way to begin the 21st century with another sellout crowd here in Southern California. The riders are at their line right now getting ready for our first qualifying heat of the evening. The qualifying procedure for Supercross begins with two qualifying heats, the top four finishers at each heat. Get the choice skate selections, earning the spot in the main event where the rest of the field then proceeds to the semifinals. Finishers one through five transfer from the main event out of each semi. The two spots at the gate remaining going to the top finishers in the last chance qualifier. Tonight, David, these riders have a lot to think about. It's a very busy first round track. I've talked with some of the guys and they, they don't really know what to call it. It's very unorthodox layout. There's some obstacles out there that are very different from what they've seen before. And even if the timing is just spot on, it's still a little bit abrupt. Let's check in with Davey Combs, trackside. Well, I'm down here. I got to tell you guys, the track is a little slicker than it might look from where you see on your screens because they watered a little bit earlier. It's not raining in California for a while, so I don't think the guys are used to it. I think you're going to see a lot of slips and bobbles tonight. Here in the first heat, you see Mike Laraku, who's coming off such a fine season, number five, number 16 on his new team, Team Kawasaki, John Dowd. Also in this heat, David Huffman, Kevin Windham, David Villeman out of France now running for Team Yamaha, Jean Sebastian Waugh from Canada, Tyler Evans, Koikena from Japan, Michael Brandis, a 125 rider, is uh, getting some 250 time here before the 125 East opens up, as is Brock Sellards, number 18, you might see there, and Stefan Roncata from Menifee, California, by way of France, Yamaha of Troy's rider also testing the 250 waters good to get his feet wet a little bit and just be in competition. Old friend of ours, Kyle Lewis in this lineup, David. Number 112, looking pretty sharp in practice. Japanese national champion coming back over here to the United States. 30-second board is up when that goes sideways. The gate will drop from 5 to 10 seconds, and we will be underway. The EA Sports Supercross Series for the year 2000 is just moments away from beginning. Let's watch and listen. Good clean start here in our first qualifying heats as number 14 is Kevin Windham hitting the whoops. Number 20 in second place is Damon Hoffman. And down in the whoops they go. It's uh, Koiketa number 39, Takeshi Koiketa. Koiketa coming off a pretty good motocross season, uh, winning uh, some Privateer of the Year honors. Here's Kevin with the number 14 and Damon Huffman. It's good to see him back with Team Suzuki now doing well after a trying year last year. That's where he had all his success in the 125 class, winning his championship. Second and third, both riding with new teams. Ezra Lusk was supposed to be in this heat, but is not racing tonight after separating that shoulder. Damon Huffman, number 20, a two-time 
125 champion. He's had his problems with injuries and getting back into the flow. Number 18, Brock Seller, Jeff M.M., the 125 rider, trying out the 250s here tonight. He's been really fun to watch on the 250. It's the first time I've ever seen this. Let's Having take like another look good. Uh, now, David, at the start. Well, Kevin Wynnum right there in the middle just comes out, gets a great jump, hooks up. He's got the clean line into the first corner, but watch right behind him. The guys in the middle are getting sandwiched. So the winner of our Yahoo Sports.com whole shot award, you got it, Kevin Wyndham. By a mile. And looking smooth right now. On my watch, I had him the fastest earlier in practice. The funny thing about Kevin is when you watch him, he doesn't look like he's going that fast, but his lap times show that he is. He's just so smooth and fluid out there. 103, a lap time to Damon Huffman's 106 in second place. That's a big difference. In third place is John Dowd, number 16. I said, hey, you look pretty good in green. He says, yeah, I just hope I don't go to the wrong truck after being with Yamaha <laughs> for so many years. And look at that, number 18, Brock Sellers. Sellers is putting some pressure on Ron Cotta, the 125 rival. And he wants to put pressure on John Dowd right now, coming through the whoops. It worked on Ron Cotta. Ron Cotta was unable to jump that finish line double. Like Davey said, it's getting slick in places, and if you don't hook up, you can't get over these jumps, and it wrecks the whole rest of the straightaway. Windham, our leader, Huffman in second, but our battle right now is for third. Brock Sellers with a good block pass on the veteran, John Dowd. Look to me, Art, like he caught Dowd completely by surprise. These guys are all hooked up in a great battle, but Kevin Windham is just pulled away from this pack. Huffman is back by 3.2 seconds already. As we take a look at the top 10, is already 14.6 seconds back. Mike LaRocco, number five, is now taking on John Dowd, and LaRocco's pouring on the call. The Honda Factory Connection. He made that whoop section look like a straightaway artist rode right around Dowd. That'll mess with Dowd's head the rest of the night. He'll know he needs to pick it up or it's gonna keep on happening. Mike LaRocco going into the fourth spot now. You don't remember, remember, the top four make it directly to the main out of this qualifying heat. Dowd struggling once again through that whoop section and now Ron Cotta is able to get back around. It could be arm pump. These guys get tight early in the season. It's pretty chilly out there. It's hard to get warmed up. And so Wyndham is still our leader. Remembering that only four of these riders will take it directly to the main. We'll be back with more in a moment. Columbus discovers the new world. 1969, man sets foot on the moon. 2000, Jerry Chevrolet Oldsmobile moves to 18 Fort Evans Road in Leesburg. about a new career, think about 7-Eleven. You'll find promotion opportunities, management experience, plus great benefits like flexible schedules, a health plan, and profit sharing. Hey, give us a call. ESPN. This is the game. Red Wings, Oilers, tomorrow at 9.30 on ESPN2. If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're going to love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. you got to eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, strength train with both legs. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism, so you end up burning more calories. Strength training these days isn't just for men. It's great for women, too, and Bowflex is designed for both. It's even been called the best home gym by Fitness Magazine. 
Use as little as 5 pounds to more than 400 pounds of resistance. Follow our six-week fast fat loss program or create your own from over 60 different health club quality exercises. Bowflex is easy to own and it fits in any room in your house. It comes with a six-week guarantee on results and you can finance it with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Hey, I'm 41 and I'm in the best shape of my life and I can tell you Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. Welcome back to Anaheim, California. The first qualifying round as Kevin Windham. Number 14 is way out in front. Let's check in with Davey Coombs. The high hopes over at Yamaha for David Billum and the Frenchman they brought over. I got to tell you, his debut went bad in the second corner. He got knocked over the hay bales. He's not going to qualify directly in this heat race. He's going to have to go to the semi. So Wyndham number 14, though, is really clipping him off, David. Art is riding beautiful. I haven't seen a mistake yet. Watch his timing. Perfectly onto the downside right, right there to the outside. And he's not using that inside groove that's developed through the whoops right there. So Kevin seems to be able to ride anywhere on the racetrack right now. Wyndham would love to use tonight's race as a launching pad for a breakthrough year of a great season. There's our second place rider, number 20, Huffman. LaRocco, number five and third. Morocco has come from not so great start, worked his way up into position, and he's got time to get by Huffman before this is over. That will improve his gate position for the main event. The battle for the final transfer spot is between 125 East Riders trying to get into the main here in the uh, West Coast Division. Brock Sellers and Stefan Roncata. Fourth and fifth, John Dowd is the veteran left out along with Villeman in sixth and seventh. Watch LaRocco go to work. He's going to move inside, outside. This is where he's been strong. This section he's approaching. This is where he passed Dowd earlier. He just rode right around him. Huffman's a little stronger through the whoops, though. LaRocco coming off a strong year. Seven podiums in Supercross, third in the standings. Final lap underway. Wyndham is just taken away with this race. LaRocco taking over the position. There you see that one line developing down the inside. I think actually what happens, that, that line is going to get so chewed out. It's working now, but later on in the night, guys are going to move away from there, and you will see some passing through that section. Look at the timing of LaRocco right onto the backside of that double jump. You come up a little short right there. That turn gets there in a hurry. You go right off the track. Mike LaRocco skying past Jean Sebastian Waz. We go back to our leader, Kevin Windham. And Windham will take the checkered flag, winning the first qualifying heat of the year 2000 in Supercross. And here is Mike LaRocco taking second place, Damon Huffman in third, and Brock Sellards is in the good position for that final transfer spot to the main event in fourth place. So here are the four riders that make our main event right off the bat from the first qualifying heat. The guy in the bubble left out is Stefan Roncata. And Villeman, Lewis, and Roncata will have to go on to the semifinal round. Let's go down and check in with Davey Coons. Well, I'm down here with a guy who'd much rather be out on the racetrack on a motorcycle. Four-time national champion Jeff Emming. Jeff, tough break, two broken arms. Yeah, um, on uh, December 30th, I was out practicing, uh, you know, just really getting things together um, and uh, really feeling strong on the bike and just came up a little bit short on a, on a small jump, you know, nothing major. And uh, just the way that I hit and uh, the way that I leveraged my wrist, it uh, broke my wrist on both sides. What's the prognosis? When are we going to see you back on a motorcycle? Well, I've got five weeks in uh, casts above my elbow, short casts after that, and then I'm sure a certain amount of uh, rehab. But uh, I'm fortunate that uh, the edgesports.com is sticking behind us in North County Yamaha. We've got a team together. And uh, so I'll have something, you know, what to come back to uh, when I decide to get back on the bike. We'll look forward to it, Jeff. Back upstairs. It's got to be, even though he's got a smile on his face, David Bailey, a very frustrating situation after he is a former champion in 1997, taking the title away from Jeremy McGrath. 
and then having some real tough times of it, and he's on the comeback trail, and to have that happen. Really unfortunate. I watched him at the Supercross in Vegas. He won that one. He seemed to be back on track. I talked with him earlier. He was so happy with the way he was riding. His lap times at the Yamaha track were as fast as McGrath, and he, he felt like he had the whoop sections dialed in. It's just too bad he doesn't have a chance to prove it. With a very happy Kevin Windham right now is our Davey Coombs. I felt good, just, you know, we'll see how this uh, second qualifier goes, you know, i got a lot of competition left in the second one, but uh, I felt good, hopefully I go out there and do the same thing in the main, just, uh, you know, stay comfortable and consistent for 20. Any extra incentive having lost your teammate Ezra Lust this afternoon? Yeah, that was real unfortunate, you know, I, man, I know how hard he's been working, uh, you know, all of us over at Honda, and uh, you know, I know how hard he's been working, it's real unfortunate for something like that to uh, take him out where he wasn't really in control of what was going on, but uh, he'll be back, but uh, no, there's definitely some pressure on me and Tortelli now. You know, we want to we want to bring it to Honda, and uh, I definitely want to bring it to myself as well. So uh, we'll just go out there and try our best. 45,000 strong, a sellout here in Anaheim as they await the appearance of Jeremy McGrath taking to the track in our second qualifier. It'll be coming up next. The King, six-time Supercross champion Jeremy McGrath. The Quest, a seventh record-shattering title. The competition, the best riders in Supercross history. Toyota Trucks presents EA Sports Supercross. The finals, May 6th, live only in pay-per-view. It's your front row seat to watch the most elite riders in the game fight for the Supercross title. Supercross, the finals, Saturday, May 6th, live in pay-per-view. The King Brothers, separated at birth. George King went to a family that subscribed to fishing magazines. James's family subscribed to the Wall Street Journal. 28 years later, George lived with his parents, while his brother James started a B2B web company and went public with a record first day pop. Food for thought, especially since you can get 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal for just 57 cents a day. That's 25% off the regular rate. Call 800-469-1600. That's 800-469-1600 for the Wall Street Journal. We were on a voyage to reclaim the America's Cup. We wouldn't return without it. If we returned at all. Giant crab! Giant crab! Prepare an attack! The crew encountered some setbacks, but our commitment to win back the Cup never wavered. The Seattle round of the 1999 Supercross season was full of great race action and a first corner pileup that left a half dozen major stars, including McGrath and Megan Lusk, on the ground and out of contention. While they picked themselves up, much to the delight of the highly partisan near capacity crowd, homeboy Larry Ward, number seven, and Kevin Windham, number 14, were staging a Donnybrook over the lead. Larry had it, Kevin wanted it, and he got it. But hey, the Seattle Kingdom is Ward country. With the crowd cheering him on, Larry Ward hung tough. Through a set of rolling jumps, Ward got the inside line, and at the end, Windham had nowhere to go. While Larry Ward pulled away, the field caught up to Wyndham, and a major warfare broke out. The rider in blue, number six, is John Dowd. He passed Wyndham for second. In the closing laps, LaRocco caught Dowd, laid a little shoulder on him, and took over second place. When Larry Ward crossed the finish line, a Supercross era ended. The Kingdom, slated to be torn down in the year 2000, had been a regular stop of the circuit since 1978. It was fitting then that the final race was won by the hometown hero. Welcome back to EA Sports Supercross from Anaheim, California. Their hearts are pounding as the riders are revving it up for our second qualifying heat, including Jeremy McGrath, Larry Ward, Tim Ferry, Greg Albertine, Sebastian Tortelli, Jimmy Button, Ricky Carmichael. This field is loaded for the second qualifier. There's about nine guys in this heat race that could feasibly win it, sign it sideways. And let's take a listen to the sounds. And going flying off the track. Was it Jimmy Button? Yes, number 12, Jimmy Button in the four stroke, along with Greg Albertine, number seven. They'll likely have to go to the semifinal round to make the main event here this evening in Anaheim. 
What disappointment for Jimmy Button on the four-stroke Yamaha. But out in front, while Jimmy Button tries to get that four-stroke started back up, McGrath controls the race as he heads into the first triple. Jeremy McGrath, who's won four consecutive races here before last year's defeat at the hands of Ezra Lutz, has Larry Ward, number 10, and his Chaparral Yamaha teammate, number 15, Tim Ferry, behind him in second and third. It's interesting right now in both practice sessions, Larry Ward jumped out right behind McGrath, studied everything. Here he is in the heat race behind him again. Let's take another look at that start. Well, I've never seen guys shoot off through the first corner the way they did. Had nowhere to go, went right up over the banking, through those tough blocks. Look to the but he just had to go straight. Yes. Yeah. Our team went flying over there, too. Carmichael just riding the very ridge of that, kind of floated right back into the racetrack. Heads up by him to not go over the top of that. If he had it, he'd be last. Yeah, Albertine. Looked like Albertine got bumped, and then yeah. he went out and hit somebody else. It was just a domino. Our leader, Jeremy McGrath, is dominating by a second to lap. There's a, one of those little slips Davey talked about. He got out of that corner, tried to get on the power, and anytime you see a shiny spot out there, that's where it's real slick. And they're getting a yellow flag here over the triple. The riders are asked to take these jumps one at a time because there's a rider down. It's Dustin Nelson from El Cajon, California. Number four, Ricky Carmichael, is on the bubble. He has Shane King in front of him. He has to pass Shane King before he gets a chance at qualifying to the main event. McGrath, Larry Ward in first and second. Perry in third. And Carmichael gives a nice shove to move into the position. And that's the result. King just found out how aggressive Ricky Carmichael really is. Shane King from New Zealand won the championship down under. A little different class of racing, even though the Australian and New Zealand racers are getting better and better each year. It's we take a look at Jeremy McGrath. Did he have his game face on before this race? I'll tell you what, I haven't seen Jeremy look this serious since a while back. And he told me, he goes, you know, I'm feeling like I did when I was a rookie. I love this, I'm enthusiastic. I'm way ahead of where I was last year. The bike is perfect, it turns great. Obviously, he's got the power dialed in because he got the whole shot. He looks in the best shape of his career. He's only something like two pounds more than he was in his first two seasons of action, and that's in spring. I just turned 28. He said he's got to train quite a bit harder more often and watch his diet a little more than he used to. But he still thinks he has some for these kids, he called them. <laughs> we might have a battle on for second place now. Looking back is Larry Ward, and it's McGrath's new teammate, Tim Ferry, number 15, trying to take over second place. Ferry obviously has learned some tricks from Jeremy. You know, it's really fun watching him in practice. He almost made that pass stick. Larry did a good job to close that line back off and keep his spot, but Jeremy had Ferry riding around behind him, and they'd stop and practice and start and talk about different sections of the racetrack. And I'm sure Ferry is really getting a lot of help. So our race action continues. Jeremy McGrath leading our second qualifying round. Four more riders will advance to the main when they return. Rated E for everyone. Super Cross 101. Wah. Oops. Loops. Superman. Superman. Med. Pick. Medic! <laughs> this power band poppin' on the pipe handlebar to handlebar lesson has been brought to you by Supercross 2000 and the letters EA Sports. It's in a game. Discover the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting instructional video. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same techniques that produced his back-to-back-to-back -back -back AAU National Championship teams. Collegiate Baseball Magazine's editor calls it a masterpiece, the best drill video ever produced. This video is endorsed by top professionals like superstar Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. The Defensive Drills video benefits players of all ages and ability levels and makes a great gift, too, so call now. It's the first Grand Slam of the century, and it's only on ESPN.
The world's best are back. Up close, down under. The Australian Open begins tomorrow night at 12.30 on ESPN2. If you have thinning hair, you can get this hair loss research update free by calling 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now. I could control the way my body looks, but not my hair. I was very confused about what to do when I started losing my hair. I didn't know where to start. I was looking for some real answers, and I got them from Hair Club's latest hair loss research update. It gave me the facts that I needed to make the right decision about my thinning hair. Now that I have my hair back, I'm glad I made that call. You can get this hair loss research update free by calling 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now. Welcome back to Supercross in Anaheim. Jeremy McGrath dominating the second qualifying heat. He's never looked better. Well, I think he's looked as good, though. That's, that's <laughs> The guy is just amazing. Right here, that whooped out double jump. He just rides right up through there the way Kevin was in the first heat. Like, they're not even there. He and Kevin are definitely in a class by themselves tonight. They get off together. They're in for a great battle. Tim Ferry, his teammate in second place. Larry Ward in third. Ricky Carmichael is in the final transfer spot. Here's number four, and here's how he got there. Comes in on the inside of Shane King on that big KTM. Tried to make that polite, but at the last second, looked like he lost his balance, had to kind of give him an elbow, and that sent King right off the racetrack. Ricky Carmichael is not messing around. A few things make him more angry than to be back in the pack, look across and see McGrath in the lead. He wants to beat him so bad. White flag lap, final lap here in our second qualifying heat. One of the all-time great 125 riders, Ricky Carmichael, trying to adjust now to the 250s as we take a look at our leader, Jeremy McGrath. I've been impressed with Tim Ferry in this one as Jeremy takes time to salute the fans. A sellout crowd here in Anaheim for round number one. Round number two next weekend is also expected to be a sellout here in the hotbed of Supercross and motocross racing in Southern California. The checkers for Jeremy. Jeremy McGrath looking so refined. Here's Carmichael. Number 21 is Sebastian Tortelli in fifth, the Frenchman for Team Honda. He's got his hands full. Can he hold on to the final transfer spot? Ricky Carmichael, number four. This is an important one for him. To build his confidence after a crash build last year in 250 Supercross. He gets the checkers, he gets the transfer. Tortelli goes to the semifinal round along with Jimmy Button, Greg Albertine. Isn't it interesting that so many of the fine foreign riders who come over here tonight to begin the Supercross round will have to go to the semifinals. Villeman, King, Tortelli, and Albertine. In our second qualifying heat, Jeremy McGrath, Tim Ferry, Larry Ward, Ricky Carmichael, all transferring now to the main event. Eight riders have qualified. Let's go down to Davy Coombs. Jeremy, I know that was only your opening statement, but man, what an exclamation point. Well, Davey, I've had a lot of time off, a lot of time to think about what I was doing over the summer. And, you know, I, I, I started riding in September, and I wasn't so sure. I was kind of shaky, crashing a lot, and... And uh, we've been working hard. I have Gary Simex back out here with me to train with me, and he's been out here for six weeks now. And uh, I think my mental confidence is definitely back. Well, David Maley made the comment that you already look as good as you ever have. You got your fighting weight down. You're riding like this is the middle of April. Yeah, you know, the last last couple of years, notoriously, I haven't been a great starter in the beginning of the season. I, I kind of uh, get the ball rolling, and then I finally pick it up in the middle. And I'd like to bring back the old Jeremy McGrath and, and try and win the races right off from the beginning. A closer look at Jeremy McGrath's career when EA Sports Supercross continues. I've been racing since I was three. I'm a pilot. I like to fly a little bit. No matter what, we want a Honda up front. I just feel like I'm on the right team and on the right place. Je m'appelle Sébastien Tortelli. Je cours pour le Team Honda. And I guess you could say I was just a little bit hairier than the other kids. They said I was hairy like a bear, and then it was Yogi Bear, and now it's just Yogi. Try nothing. 
think about who's behind you. You know, you try to always race in front of you. You feel like you can be free? Can be free? Imagine a world without competition. You'd have AT&T without MCI. You'd have Coke without Pepsi. Competition forces companies to come up with better quality products and services and lower prices. You come out the winner. Let's take Metabolite. Millions of bottles of this amazing product have been sold. Two companies are competing with Metabolite, which is great because now you have a choice. But which brand is the best choice? Well, Metabolite's too expensive at $50 a bottle. Metabolite is missing a major ingredient, guarana. That makes Metabolite and Save the best choice. And here's why. It has all the ingredients found on Metabolite's label, plus two extra ingredients. And it's only $19.95 per bottle. And guess what? For each bottle you buy right now, we'll send you $20 worth of coupons towards future purchases. Here's how to order. To order Metabolize and Save for only $19.95 plus shipping, call 1-800-474-4499. These aerial pictures from the Goodyear Blimp are courtesy of Dunlop, the number one tire for motorcycles. And Joel and Fabian are up there. Thanks for stopping by, guys, and giving us those great shots over Edison International Field here in Anaheim, California. 45,000 strong. Seeing in the second heat, Jeremy McGrath take the victory easily. Year after year, Jeremy keeps raising the bar in talent. And for the first time in his career, he didn't even compete in the National Championship Motocross Series, but he's in the best shape of his life. In a country that idolizes superstars, 28-year-old Jeremy McGrath stands tall. With no argument, he is the best to ever grace the high-flying, physically demanding sport of Supercross. With 60 career victories and six championships, McGrath has set records that most likely will never be toppled. His fame blossomed in the 125 class, where he earned championships in 91 and 92. One year later, as a rookie, he shocked the Supercross establishment by winning the first of his six 250 crowns. What was different about me is a lot of the guys in the 125 class, you know, they, they set their sights maybe a little low. You know, they start with the amateur stuff, and they want to win that 125 championship. And then once they do that, they're like, ah, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm already there. You know, all, all I could think about, no matter how many races I was winning in 125, all I could think about was getting to that 250 class, because that was the premier class. I wanted to be there. Uh, I wanted to race with the best guys. And uh, I knew inside that I had it and that I could do it. The next three years, McGrath and his factory Honda earned three more titles. The combination appeared unbeatable. McGrath then shocked the two-wheeled racing world by leaving the Honda factory team. In 1997, he rode a Suzuki to second place in the championship standings behind Jeff Emig. There's no question in my mind that I feel I beat myself. You know, I, I had won four championships up to that point, Supercross with ease, no problem. They're, there should have been no way that I should have lost that year. Um, I beat myself, and, you know, that's something, I, if I could go back and do it over again, I would do things a lot differently that year on my personal side. You know, I would focus a little more, spend a little more time doing the things I need to do to be a champion, and, you know, there's no, no way I, I beat myself for sure. Jeremy returned to his championship ways in 98 and 99 while riding for Chaparral and Yamaha and is the heavy favorite to win again in the year 2000. It's going to have to start with the starting gate because I think that I get good starts and probably 90% of the times I'm going to be in the top three. And, uh, you know, if that happens, then I think the next thing to do is the first eight laps of someone's going to have to be super fast because that's when I make the biggest move. You know, the first eight laps is the most important part of the race. And if I can get out and get in front, then the eight laps that I'm going to be in front are going to be the fastest laps of the night because I want to set myself apart from the rest of the field. That way, then I can just ride their pace and they're never going to catch me. See McGrath and the rest of the... Supercross stars live and in person. Make your plans now.
After our Anaheim series, we go to San Diego on the 22nd. Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix on the 29th. And then the tradition-rich Houston Astrodome for Supercross on the 5th. In years past, the semis have provided some of the best bar-banging action we've had. Riders are anxious not to go all the way to the last chance qualifier. The semifinals are coming up next. What time is it? I'd say it's time for some bristles and shears. I'm not cutting my own hair. No, silly. You need to go to Bristles and Shears Hair Design. That's where I go. You know I need to look professional. Relax. Their experienced staff is trained to listen first, then cut. You get your hair styled the way you want it, all done in a modern, comfortable atmosphere. They even have an esthetician. A what? A facial and skin care professional. Oh, I knew that. Well, where is Bristles and Shears? Next to Belfort Furniture and World Gym in Sterling. Honey, where are my car keys? Percival Pharmacy. It's a drugstore and much, much more. They offer one-hour photo processing and custom framing. They have a huge selection of figurines and collectibles, including Boyd's Collection, Precious Moments, Cherished Teddies, Swarovski Crystal, Fitz and Floyd's Charming Tale, and now a gold key dealer for Department 56 Villages. Percival Pharmacy makes shopping a breeze with something for everyone. They even have Christmas items year-round. It's more than a drugstore. Percival Pharmacy. Wig Monday? I thought you said Wig Monday. Oh, Hulix. First up, it's a hurricane warning in Philly when Johnny Hemsley leads Miami against Nova. Then, Kenny Gregory takes his slamming show on the road as the Jayhawks tangle with Texas A&M. And later, the running rebels look to tame Lamont Long and the Lobos. Miami Villanova at 7, Kansas, Texas A&M at 9, UNLV New Mexico at midnight. Big Monday, presented by Bud Light, Monday on ESPN. On this week's Honda Close-Up, we take a look back at a young man from El Cajon, California, who was born to race. Coming up through the ranks, Rick Johnson established himself as one of the sport's biggest superstars. RJ tallied 28 Supercross wins, one more than the great Bob Hanna, and the all-time record until broken by Jeremy McGrath. From Supercross and motocross to off-road racing and ASA Stock Cars Rookie of the Year, Rick Johnson born to race this week's Honda Close-Up. Welcome back to our Supercross action as we go to our first semi-final round with Stefan Moncada, John Dow, David Villeman, Sean Perolio, Michael Brandis, Kelly Smith, Tyler Evans, Sebastian Waugh, Koi Kita, all fighting for the top five positions. Those top five will transfer to the main event here this evening. Things are looking a lot better for Villeman now back out front. This guy's a lot of fun to watch and he uses his body so much. Number uh, 934 is Villeman. A big number, but he likes, likes to use that lucky number from last year. This is his first full-time year in American Supercross with Team Yamaha. He came in second in the GP motocross scene in the 250s last year. Here's John Dow, number 16, trying to hold on to that number two spot with number 31, Sebastian Waugh. Sebastian Waugh out of Canada, David. That's a real contrast with styles from Villeman back to John Dowd. Villeman, a tall, lanky guy that's all over the bike like Spider-Man. And then you got Dowd, who's short, stocky, a little bit stronger, rides a lot more muscle, stays a little stiffer on the bike. Waugh and number 27, Michael Brandis, battling for third with Tyler Evans in fifth. And Sean Perodio on the bubble in sixth. There's 27, Brock Sellers. And 45 is Tyler Evans. Evans in fifth. Looking to catch up on things with Perolio, number 104 on the Kawasaki. And joining us in the booth, it is our great pleasure to announce as the motorcycle racer of the century, not just the decade, the century, Kenny Roberts. Kenny, it's good to have you here. Thank you. You used to do this stuff? Well, I never did this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of glad I did it. Yeah, but you could drag your knee on pavement at 100. These guys can't do that. Well, I'll tell you, these guys, I have a lot of respect for these guys. I used to do this to stay in shape, and, and of course we still do it. My sons do it. Um, it's, just, it's just an awesome sport, and it, it is great for what we do. Well, speaking of your sons, you've got to be proud of Curtis and uh, also Ken. They're doing very well. And, uh, 
they're still learning, obviously, and, uh, you know, I really can't say anything right now. They're both going very well. What about future plans for you? Well, I don't have any. I'm trying to grow old peacefully, <laughs> but I uh, haven't really done that yet. Just got injured the other day for something that I shouldn't have been doing, but uh, nothing yet. I'm still, uh, still watching the kids. Okay, thanks for dropping in and, and saying hello to everybody. Congratulations on that terrific award. Well, thank you. Right uh, of the century. Yeah, it's, uh, I kind of thought I was done with the awards, but uh, it was nice when I, when I heard about it. It, it. it just came off good. Our first semifinal round of Zillerman in the lead, Dowd in second, Brandis in third. We'll be right back to see who will jump to the main event out of this semifinal round when we return. I never want to see you again. Wait, where are you going? Aren't you bummed? She took my favorite jersey. Here's how you can more than double your current life insurance coverage without paying one penny more than you are now. Call Best Quote. We'll prepare a free rate comparison of five top rated term life policies that meet your specific needs. Here's a sampling of the huge savings Best Quote has recently uncovered. If that's less than you're currently paying, call Best Quote today for your free rate comparison. There's no obligations and no hassles. Simply the best insurance at the best rates from Best Quote. No salesperson will ever call you. Sometimes after NHL tonight, I take my knowledge to a sports bar. There's always someone there who thinks his knowledge is the biggest. Then I showed them mine. Art Eckman, David Bailey, David Coombs bringing you the action from the city final round now as David Villeman, number 934 out of France. Outstanding technique, good timing. He has just run away with this semifinal. And the last lap white flag is out. It is Villeman, John Dowd still holding on to second place. Michael Brandis in third, Tyler Evans in fourth. Law in fifth. And on the bubble is Stefan Roncato, 125 rider. And it was interesting watching Villeman just go through that whoop section. I talked to him earlier and he said they were pretty tough and a little closer together than what he's used to, so he didn't think he'd be able to jump through them with the timing that he's so famous for, but he just did it. So these, these things are starting to get broken down, and it's really favoring his style. The heel clicker in the 125s when he had that championship battle with John Dowd, and Dowd eventually won the crown. But uh, he had many races where he was out in front and loved to entertain the fans, as he's doing here in Anaheim, California. He was doing heel clickers in practice. <laughs> I think a lot of the guys do that stuff not really to show off, uh, but to just to feel comfortable. They do this stuff during the week, so why not try to pull that in and be more relaxed? Don't let the 934 fool you. It is David Billiman taking the checkered flag and winning the semifinal number one here this evening in Anaheim. John Dowd in second place, Michael Brandis in third, Tyler Evans. It looks like we'll be in fourth, and maybe Roncada got up in the fourth. We'll have to wait and check the official results there. Here they are on the Honda scoreboard. Villeman, Dowd, Brandis, Roncada did move past Evans into fourth. Evans, though, will make the transfer to the main event. Let's go down to Davey. David, that was a much better ride than you had in the qualifier. You look like you're settling down. The track looks like it suits you now. Yeah, I had a problem with my rear brake on the first seat, and uh, I went over a bump, so I crashed, and uh, so it was bad for me, but, uh, you know, I raised the semi. Mayama put a great all shot, and uh, I could win, you know, easy, and uh, I tried to, to ride smooth and to don't make mistakes, and uh, hopefully I can ride like that in the main event. We'll see in a little bit. Good job. Thanks a lot. So David Villeman makes it into the main event. Let's see now if his countryman, Sebastian Tortelli of Team Honda, 
can make it out of the second semifinal round into the main event. Our second semi is underway with Tortelli, Boss, Lawrence, Albertine, Goodman, King, Bovoli, Blinkley, Button. He's on that four stroke and several others trying to make the main event. Grayson Goodman has the whole shot and the lead. But look at the mess behind him that he left. Pete Boss, number 33, a promising privateer on the Honda, along with number 817, Todd Downs of Corpus Christi, Texas. But number 65, here's an arena crosser who's had a lot of experience. He's a good friend of Jeremy McGrath's, has worked out with him several times. In fact, Jeremy at times has stayed at his place near Dallas to work out uh, before the Dallas Supercross. So he gets good starts, number 65. We'll just have to wait and see if number seven, Greg Albertine, will let him hold on to that number one position and number 65, Bobbles. Well, I was just about to say, Art, that I used to school Grayson Goodman at my place back in Virginia, but now I don't know if that's such a great <laughs> comment. Anyway, I, you know, he was always afraid to jump things. He'd come up to him over and over and over and not jump him. Now he's not afraid to jump anything. Very brave out there, a lot of experience. So Albertine, the big question this season, of course, will it carry over that magnificent story of his performance in last year's Nationals after injuries and frustrations plaguing his five seasons in America? He predicted that this was going to be his year, 1999, in the Nationals, and he went out and won the title. I had to give him a lot of confidence, but then he chose not to ride very many of the races during the offseason, and it seems like it's taken him a little bit to get back into flow. He didn't look himself in practice. And uh, seems to be getting it together here now, but he's also got a lot of company from, Tor from Tortelli. Here we've got two winners of opening rounds back to back. It's 97 and 98 in the order, Greg Albertine and Sebastian Tortelli, and two former multi, former GP motocross champions. And there's Jimmy Button, number 12. Button cuts to the inside. Looked like he went down. Button went down as he approached number 21, Tortelli. And as soon as you slide out of that groove, get into that loose stuff, what happens is all that loose dirt gets spit off into the, to the edge. You get in that stuff, and in some places it's pretty good traction. Others, it just kind of shuffles around the top. I think Jimmy found one of those. So Jimmy Button, instead of settling for third, trying to challenge for second, goes down and will have a big fight on his hands. He might have to go to the last chance qualifier. Greg Albertine, number seven, on the Suzuki. He's signed up for two more years. In fact, Suzuki has a third-year option on his new contract after winning that national title last year. Sebastian Torcelli doesn't look like he wants to settle, though, for second place behind Albertine. Let's take another look at Jimmy Button coming in on number 21. See number 12, the four-stroke? Actually, that was the... It was a great idea. He had the pass made. I think he got a little over anxious there, and the bike just touched the top of those last two whoops, and the tops of those are starting to get worn off. That's where it's slippery, and he found it. Well, the opening night of EA Sports Supercross continues as we see this battle for first place when we return. With a Suzuki RM under you, and Team Suzuki behind you, there will be absolutely nobody in front of you. Just ask Suzuki's Greg Albertine, 1999 AMA 250 Motocross National Champion. You know, ideas and inventions come from people in all walks of life. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? If so, Invention Submission Corporation has information to help you get started. ISC is America's largest inventor service firm. Call now and learn how to submit your idea to companies through ISC's data bank and apply for a patent. Even if your idea is just to improve an existing product, call for ISC's free information. For your inventor's information, call 1-800-652-0101. A great tradition continues on ESPN2, Friday Night Fights. This week's main event, James Lights Out Tony, takes on Terry McBroom in a 10-round cruiserweight battle. Friday Night Fights, Friday at 9 on ESPN2. Love the athletes and stars in a celebrate. Hotel rooms are come, but the mini bar ain't. Quiz time sports, gonna be a heck of a time. 
celebrate the greatest athletes of the decade live from the MGM Grand February 14th at 8 p.m. on ESPN. Welcome back into Tortelli and Albertine are going back and forth, back and forth for the lead here in the second semifinal round. Jimmy Button did not stall the bike, and he is back up in third a little ways back. But look at this battle going on. Team Suzuki versus Team Honda. Team Honda number 21, Tortelli, and look at Albertine. He got the jump. What a race. Tortelli was trying to go in there and predict where he had to place himself in order to make that block pass on Albertine's stick. Albi guessed right and was able to clear the double and get him back. Two laps to go. That was a scary moment back there in the beginning of that sequence. Tortelli had made a pass. He landed off one of the jumps in neutral, almost went over the handlebars. Great save. I had to probably mess up his concentration a little bit. Albertine, Tortelli, Button, King, Lawrence in the top five positions with Grayson Goodman on the bubble in number six. Remember the top five only make it out of the semifinal rounds to go directly to the main event. The rest go to the last chance qualifier and only two riders will get the last two gate positions out of that. This is where all that seesaw battle started a lap ago. Tortelli was able to get through the section approaching the triple a little quicker at the inside. These guys just went back and forth. Jimmy Button is starting to pick up on Tortelli. And the two are right close to each other as they approach the lappers. And as the white flag is out, it's the final lap. I think they did a pretty good job with designing this racetrack. As you can see, these guys able to use a lot of different lines, different techniques and rhythms through these sections and still stay close. Button went down again outside our camera angle. So Jimmy Button having trouble on this slick track. You usually think of the four strokes as having good adhesion, better adhesion than the two strokes on a slippery surface. Now the, the good news is he's able to keep the bike running both of those times and he hasn't lost many positions. He'll still go to the main event, but it's got to be frustrating for him. We're on the last lap. Look at Tortelli. He's got a great spirit about him. You know what's smart is Albertine moved over, took his line, and it, Tortelli wasn't able to do the triple, so that gave him a little bit of breathing room. He's going to need it heading into that last turn before the checkered flag. Tortelli was leading in points in that great battle with Albertine in the Nationals this last year when he suffered a horrendous crash in Unadilla. The checkered flag goes to Greg Albertine. Tortelli, the close second. We'll have to uh, check out and see who will finish third. It is none other than Jimmy Button keeping that four-stroke alive. Bill Lawrence is in fourth, and I believe that Grayson Goodman might have captured fifth in front of Shane King. We'll have to wait for the official announcement. But there is our winner of the second semifinal, and on his way to the main event, Greg Albertine. Well, that was a great battle. He had to work hard for that. You don't want to use that much energy in a semi, but he's in the main, and he'll have a pretty decent gate position. Before this sellout crowd of 40,000, 45,050, it's Albertine, Tortelli, Button, and Lawrence, and Goodman on their way to the main event. Let's go down to the winner's platform. Wow, Greg, what a great battle between you and your fellow world champion, Sebastian Tortelli. It was like watching a chess match. Well, Sebastian was going really well. Uh, I think he had some faster lines in me uh, at the back section, but uh, I've kind of figured out where he was going a little faster and try to pick it up, and uh, you know, I just held strong and put my Suzuki up front. What about the main event? Where are you going to pick on that start? It seems like the whole shots are coming from everywhere. Yeah, well, definitely the inside. I had a great start in the qualifier, but got pushed wide and had a crash, so uh, definitely the inside. I feel like I'm starting great, getting my Suzuki right up there in front. More outstanding racing before the sellout crowd here at Edison International Field in Anaheim, California, when we return. Hey, welcome to the Suzuki Fest 2000 Deli. Care to try a new Suzuki motorcycle with 400 bucks free accessories? I suggest the Katana 750 or 600 and a helmet. The Bandit 1200 and 600 are house favorites and go great with leather jackets. Today's special is the GS500E with a side of gloves and a helmet. Everything's good, even the financing. Like zero down, low APR, and low payments on selected models. Come into Suzuki Fest 2000 today. Free accessories, great financing. Offers end April 30th. All right, so what do you like? Deep inside the Toyota Racing Development Facility, we work around the clock to give drivers every edge we can. In fact, here's our latest prize right in here. 600 horsepower Tundra Racing V8. 
Isn't she beautiful? You like to draw or paint or maybe just sketch and doodle. Well, if you do, chances are you have the interest needed to become a serious art student. To find out, simply call toll free and Art Instruction Schools will send you this enjoyable art test. There's no cost or obligation. Take the test at home in your spare time and mail it to us when you're done. Our experts will review and grade your test. Call our toll free number today for your free art test. Don't let the wonderful world of art pass you by. To get your free art test without cost or obligation, call this toll free number. Don't delay. Call this toll free number now. Call 1 800 233 0500. That's 1 800 233 0500. most enduring symbols, the Goodyear Blimp Eagle has been providing these aerial pictures. Goodyear Blimps travel over 100,000 miles every year, covering major sporting events. Davey, we're almost set for the start now. The 32nd board is up for the first 125 race of the 21st century. We've got Greg Schnell, Lionel Pingree. These guys have got to be the favorites, with Danny Smith in there maybe thrown in as well. But we're just about ready to go, and these guys are getting nervous. They are. The gate's sign is sideways. Check Danny. it out from the blimp. A good, clean start. Smith doing a fine job. And let's see as we check the lineup. It is number 32. It is Danny Smith from Middleton, Idaho on the FMF Honda getting the whole shot and the lead. Billy Payne looks in good position. David Pingree also right in there. Let's take another look at the start from uh, ground level this time, David. A couple of guys getting pinched off right away. They've just got to wait. The guys from the outside have that faster line into the corner. The inside guy's got to get on the brake. That's safe. Everyone on the outside gets pushed wide into those tough blocks. A good tight battle going on. So Danny Smith gets the YahooSports.com whole shot award of $500 for the 125. It's a $1,000 prize for the 250s coming up a little bit later. Number 35 is David Pingree. He's got two 125 career Supercross victories already to his credit. Justin Buckaloo in third, Billy Payne in fourth, Greg Schnell in fifth, and Yuri Dostal in sixth place. What a thrill for Danny Smith right here. Art, I can't remember him leading a 125 main event. Danny Smith had two podiums last year in the 125 East. His best Supercross ever. David was a second place at Indianapolis last year. And then he also got a third at Daytona, which was a very good ride. If I remember right, he had a good run in Atlanta. And where this kid usually yes, comes on strong is in the end of the race. Now it's different because he's not coming from behind. He's going to have to deal with pressure, and we'll find out what he's made of here. A lot of good riders didn't make it to the 125 main event. Oh, you had... Guys like Jason McCormick, Casey Johnson. Casey won this race last year. They both had to come to the main event from the last chance qualifier. Got a horrible pick to the gate. A bad start because of it. Justin Buckaloo is putting the pressure on in second place. He's out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Number 158. We're seeing the leader, number 32, Danny Smith. And there's 35, David Pingree of Primal Suzuki. And Buckaloo is in one, uh, number 158. Billy Payne working on him, but it does look like these guys are starting to follow the same line. 
very difficult to pass if you're following somebody. 1.3 second advantage for Smith is all, though. You can see Danny Smith jump into that corner and kind of glance over to see where Pingree was. He's worried about him. That's the thing that Pingree's got to do. Stay close enough to make Danny worry a little bit. Casey Johnson has moved up to sixth place. Casey Johnson winning this race here last year. He's got Boland right behind him. Actually, a one, one rider in between him now. Casey's got time to move up. He came from behind last year. Didn't make his pass to the final lap. David Pickering got a final lap victory last year. Well, David really improved things. He was thinking for a while he might go back to college and uh, give up his professional racing career the way things were in a lull. But here comes Pingree. Pingree makes the pass on Danny Smith. I didn't think there was enough room through there. Just a little tiny mistake by Danny Smith and a lot of aggression by Pingree made that happen. Now Buckaloo is starting to put the pressure on Danny. That's going to force He'll have to worry about him as well. That could give the advantage to... Pingree be able to take whatever line he wants and not have to worry about somebody's front tire getting in the way. Buckaloo is uh, Yamaha Troy's youthful project. Look at Buckaloo. Look at Buckaloo. Well, the triple. For the 125 to jump that triple, Casey Johnson's also doing it, but it's very difficult to get a run because these guys only have about 30 feet. They've got to jump 70 feet. Casey Lytle, who won one of the qualifying heats, is way back in 11th place. David Pingree, our leader, last year in Minneapolis. Hubert Humphrey Doe, last lap victory, Justin Buckaloo, and David Pingree going at it now for the lead. And you can see that Danny Smith now is starting to drop back. So it could be, as I pointed out, that he's never had the position of the lead in the beginning of the race. All those riders breathing down your neck. First race of the year made him nervous. His arms could have pumped up. You can't even feel the brake, the clutch, the throttle. And when your arms pump up, you're just a sitting duck out there. And it looks like that could be happening now. Snell trying to make a move on number 195, Billy Payne of the Pro Circuit team. And Payne currently in fourth place. Danny Smith now in third with Buckaloo moving up to second to challenge Pingree. Take another look at that lead change. Just squeeze his way in there, clip the front wheel of of Danny just to try to make it into that rut. If he hadn't gone in there and clipped him a little bit, he wouldn't have gotten that rut. Danny would have got him back. Pingree's first 125 win, you might remember this, was San Jose, California, back in 1995, David. We'll be right back as the checkers will be waving when we return to Anaheim, California. One price buying, only at Templeton Dodge Olds in Tyson's. It really is that easy. Just pick the car or truck you want and get the lowest possible price right from the start. Templeton is your caravan headquarters. Over 175 caravans and conversion caravans available, starting at just $15,988, including freight, or lease for just $199 per month. No haggling, no negotiating. Just one price buying, and nobody else has it. One low price, one hour delivery, only at Templeton Dodge Olds in Tyson's. Sunday, ESPN Classics Sports Movie Saga continues with The Split. Smell the drama. Ah! What dastardly plan does Gene Hackman have for the Rams? And where did Ernest Borgnine learn how to fight? What? Sounds to me like another real classic. Sounds like The Split. Tomorrow night at 9, only on ESPN Classic. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Are you a racist? Absolutely not. He started a firestorm in New York during the playoffs. Then his comments rocked the world of baseball and outraged an entire nation. 
And then he spoke exclusively with Peter Gammons on SportsCenter. The truth, Peter, I just, I just lost my cool. I'll admit, I said something I shouldn't have said. I take it back and forgive me. For the latest news, for the biggest stories, for the most inside sports coverage anywhere, anytime, turn to SportsCenter. Welcome back to our 125 main event now. As David Pingree and Justin Buckley battle for first, it was Greg Schnell in third place. But right there, after an accident, is Billy Payne. You can see it looks like he's in a little bit of pain. He went off the track. He's approaching this double jump that's full of whoop doos Hits a tough box right there. Gets a little bit too close to the edge of the racetrack. Seemed like he couldn't let go of the bike. He just got drugged. Like those bull riders that can't get loose. You want to get away from that bike when you're crashing. So a horrible break for Billy Payne out of Simi Valley, California, on the pro circuit ride. He's moved down to 15th place now. Trying to get back up to speed in those boots. Let's go back to our leader now, David Pingree. I'll tell you what's interesting is there's plenty of time for Buckaloo to catch the leader, Pingree, we're looking at right now. And the way he's doing it is he's jumping this triple over here on the far side. Pingree didn't jump at this past lap. Buckaloo did. He closed the gap even more. David Pingree, number 35. He really stepped up things toward the end of the Nationals last year, as he did during the Supercross season. Eight laps to go. That's plenty of time. They're going to start encountering a few lap riders. That could change things. Let's check in with Davey Combs about Buckaloo. Davey. Well, I got to tell you, I'm really impressed with Justin Buckaloo. This is his first ever pro race. Guys, he got hurt last August at Loretta Lenz, which was supposed to be his last amateur race. He sat on most of the fall. And I got to tell you, it's like Yamaha Toy bringing in Ernesto Fonseca last year. Looks like they got another winner on his hands. And think of this. We've been making a big deal about that East Coast rider, Travis Pastrana. He hasn't ridden a Supercross yet. Buckaloo might steal some of that guy's glory. Oh, this is exciting. Eric Keogh, their team manager, and Yamaha Troy, and the owner, Bill Alderman. Here's the battle for third on. Side by side we go. I'll tell you what, I, I've just shifted my energy over to Casey Johnson Casey right now. Johnson, he's right. the rider on the move. I believe he's the fastest rider on the track. Number 29, Casey, going down twice during the qualifying heat, having to go to the LCQ. Casey Johnson moving up the ladder to fourth. He's now moved into third. David Pinkery, Justin Buckaloo, Casey Johnson is our order. With number 32, Danny Smith. You see him in our picture now. Seems to have regrouped a little bit. Trying to battle Schnell for fourth. There were only a couple of laps there that really, really caught Danny off guard. A lot of ways, a lot of riders went by him. Seems to have gotten comfortable again. Boy, did Casey Johnson have a great battle here last year with Casey Lydon. They were Yamaha Troy teammates at the time. Lytle had the lead, and Johnson came back on the very last lap to pass Lytle to take the victory in the opening round of the season here. Schnell trying to hold off number 32, Danny Smith, for four. As Pingree still holds on to that lead against Justin Buckaloo. There's Schnell. Basically a privateer gets his support from Motor World Yamaha. You know, last year, about the midway point, if somebody would have told me, I, I think Casey Johnson could win this thing, I would have thought, no way. He's in the same position again, about the same distance back from the lead. Buckaloo's down. Buckaloo going down. The yellow flag is up. So Casey Johnson has a chance to move up one more notch. Check it out again. See what Justin, what happened to Justin here. Well, that's a rhythm section as they approach a left-hander into another rhythm section. And looked like he just got a little bit off his timing. It took him a long time to get going. Casey Johnson has moved into second place. The last time I saw him go over the triple, he looked over and saw where Pingree was. He's not settling for second place. Here's our leader, David Pingree. Pingree looking very strong and in great shape. So our 125 main event continues.
can Bingley hold off the experienced charging Casey Johnson? We've got five laps to go. We will return. Rated E for everyone. Super. Cross. 101. Wah. Oops. Whoops. Superman. Superman. Med. Kick. Medic. <laughs> this power band popping on the pipe handlebar to handlebar lesson has been brought to you by Supercross 2000 and the letters EA Sports. It's in a game. Discover the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting instructional video. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same techniques that produced his back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU National Championship teams. Collegiate Baseball Magazine's editor calls it a masterpiece, the best drill video ever produced. This video is endorsed by top professionals like superstar Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. The Defensive Drills video benefits players of all ages and ability levels and makes a great gift, too, so call now. NHL on ESPN. This is the game. Red Wings, Oilers, tomorrow at 9.30 on ESPN2. The King Brothers, separated at birth. George King went to a family that subscribed to fishing magazines. James's family subscribed to the Wall Street Journal. 28 years later, George lived with his parents, while his brother James started a B2B web company and went public with a record first day pop. Food for thought, especially since you can get 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal for just 57 cents a day. That's 25% off the regular rate. Call 800-469-1600. That's 800-469-1600 for the Wall Street Journal. The young future superstars of Supercross are on the track right now. Welcome back to our 125 main event here from Anaheim, California, the opening round of the season. This is the battle for third coming up. As number 35 is David Pingree, our leader. And he's held on beautifully. But the battle for third right now is between number 63, Greg Schnell, and number 32, Danny Smith. Casey Johnson is in a lonely land there, David Bailey, in second place, about eight seconds behind the leader. I'll tell you what, though, what a ride. Coming from the last chance qualifier, lousy pick to the starting line for the main event, a bad start because of it. And he is closing on the leader, Pingree. Although Pingree, as we came back, he saw him look over. He knows right where Johnson is, and with the last remaining, I don't think Johnson's closed him fast enough. Here's the battle for third still, as uh, Schnell just won't crack. Danny Smith, number 32, trying to pick up on the whoops. Schnell's riding a fine race. Does so much for your confidence when you start the season off. With a look at the lead, good start, good clean race, battling with the front runners. It's a lap rider going down. Looked to me like Desco. Snell cut across the inside of that corner. It wasn't a fast line, but he's really starting to think about what he needs to do to keep Danny Smith back there. Only three laps to go. Here for the 125 main event. Snell's got to be smart and strong. As Danny Smith, we've seen him hop over a corner to take away a position in a race. <laughs> Whatever it takes. This is the triple that the leaders are able to get over. Each lap, they're picking up another second. The gap for the lead, has, as these guys continue to battle, has closed to five seconds. This is the part of the race where you're starting to get tired. Concentration, lap riders, track's getting slick. Can David Pingree hold off Casey Johnson? He had a pretty good start on him. And here's the battle for third once again. Still about five bike lanes. There's Casey Johnson in second place, number 29. You know, and if he ends up in second, Art, I think he'll take it. I think he'll be pretty happy considering how the night, uh, how the day began, really. He didn't look that great in practice. He struggled in the heat race, went to the last chance, barely made that. A sour evening for Talon Boland. The pro circuit rider went down. Never known for being a super cross rider, however. Talon came through and gave Ricky Carmichael quite a challenge during the uh, Nationals. 
There's your leader. The final lap is underway for David Pingree. Pingree looking for his third 125 Supercross victory. Oh, a little wheelie off that one. I don't think he meant to do that. Probably got his heart rate a little bit higher. But David's pretty experienced. He's won before. He's challenged for the lead. He knows what he needs to do is just be smart in his final lap, not make a major mistake. He should be able to win it. The primal Suzuki rider has got Roger DeCoster looking wide-eyed at him right now. As Bengri is coming through in the first race of the year. Decides to play it safe over that triple. He had a couple lap riders in the way. Luckily, he had enough cushion on Johnson. This is turning out to be a good story for David Bengri, whose career he thought was almost washed up. Taking on the lap riders. Look out for trouble. Put the hand in the air. David Pingree takes the checkered flag. Like he was on a Sunday ride instead of Saturday night. <laughs> Casey Johnson in second place. That'll put him in good stead points-wise for the eighth race 125 West season. Greg Schnell in third, taking the checkered flag. There was a time, like you said, where his career was in question. He broke his leg badly at press day in San Diego one time, and it looked like he might call it quits, but what a comeback. The happy Pingree taking a victory lap. It's Pingree, Johnson, Schnell, Smith, and Shane Bentley doing a fine job. He has not had much Supercross time, and he moves in to the uh, top five for that pro circuit team of Mitch Bates. Great way to start the season. I mean, it started a lot earlier for him because he was originally scheduled to ride in the East. Yuri Dostal in sixth. Talon Volan came up to seventh with Jason McCormick in eighth. Christopher Gassler and Billy Payne rounding out our top ten. Let's check out Davey Coombs now as he makes his way toward the podium. Oh, man, Ping, I know this one's got to feel good right here in front of everyone in Anaheim. I know you've been working all winter long for this. I have, man. I mean, I've been working six years long for this. I've had a lot of injuries and a lot of things keeping me back. And, and man, we worked so hard. I'm so happy for my whole team. It feels great. I know last year you won that finale in the 125 West region in Minnesota. Gave you something to work off of. You come out here, you're the points leader, man. Yeah, I mean, I can't even tell you how good it feels. I, I'm shaking right now, you know, and... uh. It feels great. <laughs> Fantastic ride, David. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So David Pingree breaks the Yamaha string of four straight 125 wins here at Anaheim, California. Casey Johnson, John Dowd, Kevin Windham back-to-back -back wins in 1996 and 97. Pingree is the man of the hour in the 125s. Time is near for the greatest Supercross racers in the world to rev it up. The 250s hit the track when we return. I've been racing since I was three. I'm a pilot. I like to fly a little bit. No matter what, we want a Honda up front. I just feel like I'm on the right team and on the right place. Je m'appelle Sébastien Tortelli. Je cours pour le Team Honda. I guess you could say I was just a little bit hairier than the other kids. They said I was hairy like a bear, and then I was Yogi Bear, and now it's just Yogi. Try not to think about who's behind you. You know, you try to always race in front of you. You feel like you can be free? Can be free. Can be free. And our Craftmatic Model 2 adjustable bed is so relaxing. It may even temporarily provide relief from my low back pain, Harry. Yet it costs up to 56% less than a quality flatbed. I adjust my head and feet and fall right to sleep. 
Call toll-free to get free information by mail about the Craftmatic Model 2 adjustable bed. This wonderful bed adjusts to hundreds of relaxing positions, offers optional warm, soothing heat, and relaxing built-in massage, yet costs up to 56% less than these quality flat beds. Up to 56% less! Don't pay more to remain flat. Call toll-free and get complete free facts by mail about the adjustable bed that costs up to 56% less. Call to get Craftmatic's free catalog right away. There's absolutely no obligation. Call toll-free 1-800-344-8300. That's 1-800-344-8300 toll-free. 1-800-344-8300. Welcome back to our opening round of EA Sports Supercross from Edison International Field in Anaheim, California. Our main event getting ready. There's Greg Albertine with the helmet on, anxiously awaiting the start of the first race of the year. Let's take a look at the starting lineup now for tonight's race. The two heat winners, Jeremy McGrath and Kevin Windham, Tim Ferry, McGrath's teammate right up there, along with Mike LaRocco, Larry Ward, Damon Huffman, Ricky Carmichael in the main event, along with 125 rider Brock Sellards, who made the main. David Villeman, Greg Albertine, John Dowd, Sebastian Tortelli, Michael Brandis, Jimmy Button on the four-stroke. Another 125 Eastern rider making the 250 main event, Stefan Roncata, Phil Lawrence, an old-time veteran who came up with Jeremy McGrath in the old days. Tyler Evans, Grayson Goodman, Jean-Sebastian Waugh, and Heath Voss. That's a powerful lineup for our first round of the year, David. It is, and just to think that we were actually missing a couple of guys, and it's still that strong. We haven't really lost much in terms of the depth and the talent. Carmichael is surprising me a little bit right now. He said he was tight. He looked it so far. There's McGrath. He's never tight. He's loose. Skip Norfolk just walked away from him, his old mechanic at Honda. I'm sure he probably gave him a couple little words there to make him feel comfortable, but I don't know that Jeremy really needs it. He's starting right next to Kevin Windham. This should be interesting. That should be a great start, these two. Kevin Windham is known for getting outstanding starts from the Supercross gate. Well, you got two guys that get outstanding starts, and then number five, LaRocca, right next to him, who's managed to pull a couple of hole shots here and there and has improved his starting ability, but tonight it hasn't been that great. We'll see if he can pick that up in the main event. They're to the inside of the starter box. Carmichael's just to the other side. So if they all get off even, Carmichael's going wide into those tough blocks again. That could be a, a Ooh, that's dangerous... that's something to watch for, yes. And the great crowd is awaiting it to see if anyone can master Jeremy McGrath's performance. 32nd board is up. There's Jeff Stanton, part of the Team Honda crew. All right next to Roger DeCoster. And we're almost set for the first Supercross of the 21st century. You know, sustain some drives on offense, get some points. All right, thanks, Greg. All right, Armin, our halftime. Sideways, they'll be revving it up. Number 16 has gone down. Let's check out the sights and sounds of our start. Good start by Rick Carmichael. He's got his teammate, Larry Ward. Mike LaRocco, a good start, and Jeremy McGrath is in fifth position. Behind Mike LaRocco, I might add. You don't see that too often in the opening lap. There's LaRocco, number five. Number one is on the chase. Bonus for Carmichael, though. Anytime you can get a hole shot, you look over your shoulder, and you got your teammate right behind you. It's so much easier to relax and get in your flow. McGrath already going to work, staying low off the triple. Here comes Wyndham. He's really pressuring Ward for second. As we see McGrath trying to pick up on LaRocco. Thought he had him passed, but LaRocco was able to hold him off. Doesn't really matter the opening lap. McGrath has got the leaders in sight. That's all that really matters. He's got the speed. Here's the battle. Ward boxing out Wyndham. Wyndham was really trying to move up into second place there as uh, Ricky Carmichael is currently in first. This could be a big confidence move for Ricky Carmichael. A podium here in the opening round. Look at Sellers coming down the inside of McGrath. Makes the pass. Sellers number 18. Rubbing a little plastic with Jeremy. Jeremy gets him back, but that was close. Jimmy Button right behind Jeremy McGrath. Art, I really didn't think after watching practice that LaRocco looked that sharp. He just really picked it up tonight. 
Let's take a look at who won the YahooSports.com Whole Shot Award, $1,000, Ricky Carmichael. Just edges out Larry Ward. Good clean start. I was worried after that heat race when everyone went down. I think everyone was a little bit careful about that in the first corner. No one wants to start the season crashing in the first corner. The battle for second is on. Larry Ward sees Wyndham cut right in front of him before the jump. And there's McGrath right on Ward's tail. So Wyndham dishes it right back to Larry Ward in the same place, picks up the spot, but while they change back and forth, Carmichael's pulling away. Ward was leading after a hole shot here last year and faded to 18. He's right behind Kevin Wyndham right now, and Ricky Carmichael is starting to pull out a lead, a two-second lead. Think about this. Carmichael injured himself at the Paris Supercross not that long ago. Has probably had less time to prepare for this opener than the guys he's racing with right now. And he's looking pretty flawless so far. So McGrath has gotten around LaRocco. And here is the battle on with Larry Ward. McGrath making it look easy, passing Larry Ward. That was just a matter of Jeremy being so much... I don't know what the word is. The guy's got about a, just a percent on everybody. Everywhere on the racetrack, they both stay a little bit lower, a little bit tighter, always in the right line. And it was just picking up a foot here and a foot there that allowed him to get to get the edge on Larry Ward. Jeremy McGrath looking near perfect as he pursues Kevin Windham. Windham in second place behind Ricky Carmichael here in the first main event of the year 2000. Oh, Wyndham cutting in front of, of McGrath in this tight battle for second place. These guys' reflexes are unbelievable. As close as they get to each other and how easy it would be for one of them to clip the other and go down, they still don't. It's amazing. So the former six-time champion, the defending champion, draws the cheers of the fans here in his backyard, Anaheim, California, making the pass into second place. And you wonder, how can Jeremy make a pass on somebody as skilled as Kevin Wynn and the long legs able to soak up that takeoff on the triple? Jeremy still stayed lower and got that pass done. So now, in the crosshairs for Jeremy McGrath is Ricky Carmichael. I'll tell you, but really, uh, it's so important for Carmichael right now to not get flustered about Jeremy. Even if he's able to gain on him and make the pass, Carmichael needs to start the season with a podium finish. There you see the interval between their leaders, Ricky Carmichael and Jeremy McGrath. And here's the battle between Mike LaRocco and Kevin Windham. Windham winning a heat very impressively. And LaRocco looking very smooth all weekend in practice. Smooth, but I didn't think he had the speed these guys do. And right now he's showing it. Kevin Windham had a faster heat race than McGrath. Not by much, but a little bit faster. And McGrath rode right around and pulled away and has closed the gap on Carmichael. And here comes LaRocco. LaRocco springs over number 14, Kevin Windham. The Honda factory connection beating Team Honda at that one. And look at McGrath. He's starting to pull up close now to number four, Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael's. First try of the 250, less than stellar last year. Can Carmichael hold off the charge? We'll find out right after these words. Adelphia puts premium entertainment right in your living room with HBO. This month, a tight-knit squad of soldiers must fight for survival. The Thin Red Line. Michael Keaton is the world's coolest dad. Jack Frost. Sarah Michelle Gellar cooks up a little romance. Simply irresistible. And get the scoop for the big game on Inside the NFL. To be on Inside the NFL. With these great hits and more, you'll find what you're looking for on Adelphia and HBO. Call and order today. Those extreme sports. Call to order your Dell Dimension with an Intel Celeron processor. 
Be direct. Dell. It's the first Grand Slam of the century. And it's only on ESPN. The world's best are back. Up close, down under. The Australian Open begins tomorrow night at 12.30 on ESPN2. Check out SportsCenter every night for a preview of the 2000 SBs. Log on to ESPN.com for the Performer of the Decade nominees. Compare your picks with ESPN's when the awards are televised February 14. Watch SportsCenter or log on to ESPN for a preview. The King Brothers, separated at birth. George King went to a family that subscribed to fishing magazines. James's family subscribed to the Wall Street Journal. 28 years later, George lived with his parents, while his brother James started a B2B web company and went public with a record first day pop. Food for thought, especially since you can get 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal for just 57 cents a day. That's 25% off the regular rate. Call 800-469-1600. That's 800-469-1600 for the Wall Street Journal. Welcome back. The battle is still raging. A new leader. Our third leader of the 250 main. And now Ricky Carmichael almost got him back. That was close. Carmichael ran in there with his front tire and probably just touched the edge of McGrath's boot. This is the opportunity Carmichael's been dreaming about ever since Tampa last year where he had the hole shot and a great opportunity to win the race right here. Maybe he can pick up the pace and learn a little bit from Jeremy, find out what lines, what things that Jeremy is doing better to be able to click off that much time of RC's lead. Carmichael, of course, one of the great all-time 125 riders. He was the first rider to sweep a Supercross 125 season. And, of course, he tied Mark Barnett's all-time 125 record for the national wins with 25 career 125 national wins. Carmichael on the outside tries to make it close once again. Wants to put the heat on Jeremy McGrath. Can you believe this? I can, because I've spoken with Carmichael quite a bit, and he will not settle for second. Carmichael retakes the lead. Oh, Jeremy caught the rear wheel on one of the jumps. Controlled it well, and bar to bar, we go once again. This is how you beat McGrath. You challenge him. You don't let him go. Ricky Carmichael, even McGrath, retaking the lead, looks back at the young man from Havana, Florida. And look at Morocco. Morocco's getting into the scene. We got a three-way battle going on right now. So smart by Morocco right there. He realized he had his line cut off. He decided, oh, I'll just back off here a little bit. Didn't lose hardly any time. Look at that. And a textbook a block pass right there. Block pass by Mike Morocco puts him into second place. And what do you think of this idea? Morocco looks to me like he's gunning for McGrath. He's not just going, all right, I'm in second. This is pretty good. It looks to me like he's still got his sights set on McGrath and winning this opener. It's important for Carmichael to hold off the rampaging number 14, Kevin Windham, behind him as well. Always vital to get a good start in the point system here in the first round. Looks as though Windham has regrouped just a little bit. Seemed like he fell off the pace that one lap. Lost a lot of time. He may have kind of got comfortable again. Seven podiums in Supercross last year for this young man, or for Mike Larocco, as we switch to Jeremy McGrath, our defending champion. Four consecutive wins here, but he has not won at Anaheim for three years. And he's starting to draw a good lead now on Mike Larocco. As you see, Larocco number five, four is Ricky Carmichael. Number 14 is Kevin Windham trying to get the podium spot. This is gonna turn out to be the battle. I have a feeling it looks like Larocco doesn't have a chance to catch McGrath unless he makes a major mistake. So this is gonna be the focus, I believe. Windham still has some left for Carmichael. Carmichael with that first serious injury of his career in San Diego last year, set him back, put a foot peg into his leg, cracked pelvis, and so he's had to battle back to regain his confidence as well as his physical endurance. And endurance is going to play a part right now. He can't afford a mistake against Kevin Windham. And there's a little one that danced right back straight, and Weir Wheel got out away from him. These whoops. Not only do you have to ride across bumps, but they're starting to get rutted out. It wants to kick that back in side to side. Here last year, 
Carmichael started out in fourth and ended up in sixth when the checkers came out. Here comes Wyndham. Wyndham bobbling just a little bit of the whoops, and Carmichael did not bobble. Even though he's following that rut where they've been worn down more, you've got to stay balanced perfectly straight in the rut. That makes it a little bit tougher. A lot expected of this young man, number four, who came into the pro ranks with so many amateur titles. And such an impressive entry into the 125 ranks. Just dominating. Kevin Windham has had up and down years with injuries, but has shown potential and is looking for year number 2000 to be the breakthrough year for him. And while we watch this battle, just ahead of these guys, LaRocco has closed the gap on McGrath. So we got a battle for the lead and a battle for third. Incredible in our opening match here in Anaheim. Here's McGrath, our leader, number one. It's looking like the whoops aren't even there. The bike and back, number five, Mike LaRocco. He is picking up on it. Now you see how close it is. It looked like Jeremy was just getting away. I, I took my eyes off him, and he made a, may, may have made a mistake that allowed LaRocco to close to see if Jeremy can open it up again. Jeremy, at this morning, seventh in the opener here last year, was second in round five on the rematch here in Anaheim, where LaRocco took a third and a fourth last year here in Anaheim. Best race between these two guys. In St. Louis, I believe, last year, LaRocco out front, challenging McGrath. Here we are at the opener, and he's doing it again. Uh, his career has just been revitalized. Unbelievable. Last year, he just came back to life. His starts have improved. It's what he needed. The guy is so strong, and Jeremy knows that LaRocco does not mess around the last five laps of the main event. That's where he's... Jeremy really needs to have a little bit of a cushion because... I guarantee you they're going to have to deal with lap riders. And if Morocco's close enough to take advantage of a bad decision by McGrath, that could be the difference. Third and fourth in position. Ricky Carmichael and Kevin Windham. Nine laps to go here in our 250 main event. 20 laps for the 250s. And an easy move inside. Kevin Windham makes the pass on Ricky Carmichael. Looks to me like if you watch Carmichael's style as he came into that corner, it looks like he just sort of settled. He looked almost as though he went wide on purpose, knowing Kevin was right there. Just didn't want to deal with all that pressure right now. It could be arm pump, tired, anything. He already has 60 wins in his career. Number one, Jeremy McGrath continues to lead. We'll check him out when we return from these words. Hey honey, welcome to the Suzuki Fest 2000 Daily. Care for a Suzuki motorcycle with $400 free accessories? How about the Intruder LC 1500 in a leather jacket? The Intruder 1400 or 800 go great with a helmet, and you can't miss with the Marauder or Savage 650. It's all good, even financing like zero down, low APR, and low payments on selected models. Come into Suzuki Fest 2000 today. Free accessories, great financing, offers end April 30th. Bye, what'll it be? If you have thinning hair, you can get this hair loss research update free by calling 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now. I could control the way my body looks, but not my hair. I was very confused about what to do when I started losing my hair. I didn't know where to start. I was looking for some real answers, and I got them from Hair Club's latest hair loss research update. It gave me the facts that I needed to make the right decision about my thinning hair. Now that I have my hair back, I'm glad I made that call. You can get this hair loss research update free by calling 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now. Big Monday? I thought you said Wig Monday. Oh, Wolex. First up, it's a hurricane warning in Philly when Johnny Hemsley leads Miami against Nova. Then, Kenny Gregory takes his slamming show on the road as the Jayhawks tangle with Texas A&M. And later, the running Rebels look to tame Lamont Long and the Lobos. Miami Villanova at 7, Kansas, Texas A&M at 9, UNLV New Mexico at midnight. Big Monday, presented by Bud Light, Monday on ESPN. Welcome back to Anaheim, California, where our leader is the Supercross Rider of the Century. That's for sure. And it's only a few days into the century, the new century. And I'm speaking of Jeremy McGrath because he has been near perfect here in the opening round of Supercross in the year 2000. But we've got some tremendous battles going on. Sebastian Tortelli in fifth. Jimmy Button in sixth. 
and David Villeman in seventh as Wyndham has just passed Ricky Carmichael. Wyndham moving into third behind Mike Lerato. Actually, it's, uh, it looks like Wyndham because they're wearing the same outfit, riding the same bike, but it's Tortelli who's it's come Tortelli. from about tenth place and has worked his way into fourth ahead of Ricky Carmichael. And you can see how close they all are. Does this ring a bell? Tortelli coming from nowhere in the season's opener in the Los Angeles Coliseum. It rings a bell for sure, although this time we know who he is and we know what place he's in. That, that was confusing with the three-digit number. He came out of nowhere, but we got our eyes on him now. He's worked his way up from mid-pass. So it's McGrath, Morocco, Wyndham, Tortelli, the top four with Carmichael Button and Billiman in a great battle. This could be a three-way battle for four. There's Villeman, 934 on the outside. Something has had to have happened to Carmichael. Now he's gotten passed by both these guys. Albertine, you just saw, moved ahead of him. He could have come up uh, short on a jump, over jumped something. It's really very, it's really hard to tell. Without radio communication from the riders to anybody, you just gotta wait and see what happens after the main event. But obviously Ricky is suffering from some problem because he's way off the pace now. Two team Yamaha riders battling right there. Number 12, Jimmy Button on the four stroke. And number 934 on the two stroke Yamaha is David Villeman. Albertine is right behind them with Ward now moving up. Button putting in a great ride, and that completely different power plant, the four-stroke versus the two-stroke of Billiman behind him. Lap Couple riders going down, getting back up. One of them was Heath Ross, number 32, but look at this. David Billiman, number 934, to the inside on Jimmy Button. Can he hold the spot now against the four-stroke? Billiman, an impressive premier in his first full year in American Supercross. Now you've got the Frenchman Sebastian Tortelli and another Frenchman David Villeman. I think Villeman has something for Tortelli before the end of this race. Number 21 is Tortelli. And while we're looking at this battle, keep in mind this is 22 seconds, 26 seconds behind the leader McGrath. McGrath has just opened up a tremendous lead over the battle for third. Morocco still staying pretty close behind McGrath, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to close the gap as, we, as he did earlier. Number 21, Tortelli. Approaching three laps to go now. Can he hold off his fellow Frenchman, David Villeman? Tortelli, a 125 and 250 World GP motocross champion. As these guys went over the triple, McGrath was going the other way on the whoop section. If these guys happen to glance over and see that, it's just demoralizing. Good. Incredible the way that McGrath has just been able to pull away now. Mike Morocco settling in in second. Kevin Windham in third. Now we pick up number 21 in fourth. Incidentally, Tim Ferry had to bow out of the race after crashing early. Very big disappointment for that Chaparral Yamaha rider. And in the, with the absence of lust for Team Honda, they've still been able to keep Tortelli, who no one really considered to be a Supercross rider. And this is the first time he's raced here in the United States since he broke his wrist in Unadilla last year in the Nationals. Baker Park, he ran in the United States, but the GP, the oh, US GP. the Grand Prix. And he came back so soon after that injury to run in that race and did a very credible job. Here's the leader, Jeremy McGrath. Nothing less than sensational right now. And then the battle goes on for four. Looked like Tortelli was going to be able to make a move, but... I mean, uh, Villeman rather on Tortelli, but Sebastian able to hold him off. And these guys have closed the gap on Wyndham. That's Wyndham just ahead of him. Both these guys in tremendous physical conditioning. And I'll tell you what, these are the laps where it really pays off. It's more, more so than the, the physical, it's the concentration. Just, just to, I'm playing this EA Sports video game and I'm getting tired trying to concentrate on that for five laps. Imagine this for 20. 
Don't forget, you can see this action live, pay-per-view. The final race of the year from Las Vegas. Check it out as we make history once again with Supercross. Final race of the year in Las Vegas on pay-per-view this year. Final lap, white flag is out. Jeremy McGrath is looking to become a winner for the 61st time in his career. This would be the eighth straight year in his career with a victory. And he's serving notice right now for those who question his move of not running the motocross season. He just came back even stronger. Yeah, I thought we would see that. The knack knack. Crowd was on its feet going, please show us one more of those before it's over. <laughs> he knows what they want. You know, Yamaha could make it right now three decades in a row tonight. Mike Bell won the first Supercross in the 1980s. And Jeremy McGrath takes the first Supercross in the year 2000. The checkers for Jeremy. Mike Bell won the first super, Supercross in the 80s. Damon Bradshaw won the first Supercross in the 90s on a Yamaha. And now McGrath has taken it for three decades in a row. The opener. The battle for third is still on. Mike LaRocco taking second, but Kevin Windham and Tortelli going at it. There's Kevin Windham, number 14. He will go on the podium. So we'll get a chance to get their reactions when Davey Coombs moves over to the winning podium. King Brothers. Separated at birth, George King went to a family that subscribed to fishing magazines. James's family subscribed to the Wall Street Journal. 28 years later, George lived with his parents, while his brother James started a B2B web company and went public with a record first day pop. Food for thought, especially since you can get 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal for just 57 cents a day. That's 25% off the regular rate. Call 800-469-1600. That's 800-469-1600 for the Wall Street Journal. Ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape? I've got a free video you're gonna love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. You gotta eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, strength train with both legs. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism, so you end up burning more calories. Strength training these days isn't just for men. It's great for women, too, and Bowflex is designed for both. It's even been called the best home gym by Fitness Magazine. Use as little as 5 pounds to more than 400 pounds of resistance. Follow our six-week fast fat loss program or create your own from over 60 different health club quality exercises. Bowflex is easy to own, and it fits in any room in your house. It comes with a six-week guarantee on results, and you can finance it with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Hey, I'm 41, and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I can tell you, Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. EA Sports Supercross is brought to you by Honda Motorcycles and the 2000 Honda Race Team. Honda, ride red. And by the U.S. Army. Be a part of the toughest, smartest army in the world. Be all you can be. Also by Suzuki during Suzuki Fest 2000. Get $400 worth of free accessories and great financing on selected models. Jeremy McGrath wins his 61st Supercross. He ties Jeff Ward with winning a Supercross for the eighth consecutive year. Davy Coombs is down near the podium now with those who tried to take it away from him. Kevin, that was a good ride for third place. It looked like a mature ride for you. Are you thinking about the whole series? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, the later stages seems to be my strong point, and uh, I just need to keep going, get up, get up there, and uh, you know, try to keep getting the podiums. I know that's what Jeremy's going to do every time, and uh, you know, I felt good with a little podium ride that time, and uh, 
He'll just take it from there. Just, just stay off my head and uh, look forward to a long season. Good job on the opener. Yeah, thanks a lot. This is the first opening season victory for Jeremy McGrath at Anaheim. Despite the fact he's got five victories here. McGrath, LaRocco taking second. Kevin Windham also on the podium with the two Frenchmen rounding out the top five. Tortelli and Villeman really giving us some excitement during that race, David. I'll tell you what, Sebastian really picked up the pace when he saw Villeman coming. That was a gutsy ride. They closed in on Windham. He almost made the podium. Carmichael slipping to eighth. Ward in ninth and John Dowd rounding out the top ten in our season's opener. Let's go back down now to the victory podium and Davy Coombs. Well, Mike, I got to tell you, I was pretty surprised by that ride. We were talking about a lot of the younger guys, but you went out there and showed you carried the speed over, maybe even improved on it here in 2000. Well, I tell you what, uh, my Amsoil competition accessories uh, check in the box team. We we're, we're great going into the season. The new Hondas are awesome. Uh, you know, my factory connection suspension worked great out there. So all I really had to do was get a good start, which, I, you know, for me, I did. And, uh, you know, I rode a pretty good race. Things were pretty busy up front early. And, uh, you know, Jeremy got by me because those guys were messing around before the finish line jump. And uh, he's riding good. Uh, you know, he was riding my comfort zone. I felt like I had his speed, but uh, I just couldn't make it back up. Was that your goal in the opener to come out here and get on the podium? Uh, no, it was the win. <laughs> Uh, I felt good all off season. Like I said, the, the new Hondas are awesome. Uh, as soon as I got on the new chassis, I felt real good. It's, uh, I think, a lot better for my riding style, and uh, you know, not to mention, runs on a good motor. Okay, real good ride tonight, Mike. So Mike Larocco takes his second place. He had second places in Seattle and St. Louis last year, but he looked a lot smoother early in the season here in the year 2000, David. I'll tell you what, LaRocco always looks smooth. He's always tough at the end of the race, but what surprised me about him this year is his starts have improved dramatically, uh, and he gave Jeremy a little bit of a scare. He closed the gap a couple of times, and he really didn't lose by much. I mean, he had him in sight the whole race. Win number 61. Let's check him out. Man, Jeremy, all that off-season work, it just paid off. Yeah, the batteries are definitely charged up now. Um, I felt really good out there. I, I didn't get such a great start and had to work for that one. So that, that was really good. All the, all the hard work is paying off. It looked like in the beginning, Ricky Carmichael, kind of a surprise, but then later on, we were surprised that Mike LaRocco stayed with you for a little bit. Were you checking the rearview mirror? Yeah, I was, I was behind Mike for a while, and then Larry and I think Kevin or someone were jacking around here before the finish line, and Mike had to roll it, and then I jumped it, got by him, pulled out a little distance, and he was definitely keeping me honest. I was, I was scoping him every lap. Finally, how's it feel to get an opening win once again? Anaheim's always been really good to me, except for the past couple years. And uh, I'm really excited to be here. I mean, like I said, I'm happy to be racing. I've been sitting on the couch for a while, way too long. And, and, it, and it feels nice to be up here. He has not been sitting on the couch, David Bailey. He probably wishes he could have sat. That was probably the plan. But I guarantee you there were a lot of contractual uh, obligations during that break and it probably ended up being a little more busy and it would have been easier for him to just continue racing every week we'll be awarding the army teamwork award it takes teamwork even to get to the opening round and jeremy mcgrath's crew including mechanic randy lawrence is this week's u.s army teamwork award winner how about that david bailey you know and i'm not that surprised by that or or by kevin windham i expected those guys to be up there but the surprise to me was larocco and especially tortelli and I'm very curious to find out what happened to Carmichael dropping all the way to eight. Art Ekman for David Bailey, Davy Coombs, thanking you for joining us for another exciting season of EA Sports Supercross. Williams, who just hit that big... Ball.